Hey, this is Glitch with Binge Records. I got a few moments to sit down with Matter. It's really difficult to get them to sit down in one place at the same time. But we're here to ask them a few questions about the drum and bass scene and what it's about. So, hey guys, do you mind introducing yourselves? I'm Toby One. I'm Miss Jilla. And I'm Format. And together they are... Matter. <laughs> so yeah, guys, um, what we wanted to know is, like, having played a variety of parties, how do you keep unique to your sound? I'll take this question I like first. Could this um, well. I think we've all been in the industry a long time. Okay, well, maybe not Jace. Jace has been doing this. I've been doing this. <laughs> But um, I think uh, that's the reason why we all came together. Is we actually want to try to do something different. And I think we all bring something unique to the sound that is Matter. Um, I know Matt has been in the DJing side of things and music production for a very long time. I've been into scratching and the turntablism side and Jess obviously with her powerful vocals. And that all mixed together really gives this absolute unique sound that I haven't really seen anywhere else in South Africa and um, taking that and putting it into different spaces with a different feeling but still retaining the matter sound I think that's what we're about nice one that was really awesome um, I wanted to know uh, you guys are really like a positive focused group you guys are awesome you have super cool vibes and super cool energies especially when you're playing music but when you're not how do you keep everyone who follows you and interacts with you engaged you know and following because i know you guys have a lot of fans and they support you really positively like when you go out they talk about you and like you know how do you keep that level of engagement as matter all right so for me i'm sure it goes without saying with you guys as well it's actually creating that connection off stage with people as well. So it's not just about being on stage. We're not there to perform for them and then and then leave. You know, we want yeah. to create that vibe off stage as well. So creating memories with people, experiences that we're all going to remember and, and cherish ultimately um, for a long time to come. I think for me, that's one of the biggest things. Definitely. Yeah, I'm sure you. Yeah. Would be the same for you. Yeah, I feel like making friends through people that are sharing an experience with you. You're giving it to them. They're giving the energy back to you. It's all part of the vibe. So I mean. It, it's it's naturally conducive to make friends with these people and enjoy those moments after and before and party with them yeah. to like show your appreciation and share that appreciation with others. I mean, that's why we do this. And breaking that idea as well for me that when there's a person up there, they're not better than you, you know. Yeah. You're not watching them. Like, we're no better than the people that are in front no of us, worries. you know. Yeah. So it's just cool that we can share that experience with like-minded people. Nice one, guys. Um, having played a lot of big events this year, uh, where do you see yourselves in the years to come? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, again, being, having done this for so long, I think right now we're just trying to achieve a, a large reach with our music and that will then translate into the studio. So we're starting to work on an album together. Um, we're getting our mixes out there. A lot of guys in South Africa are starting to push uh, production far and opening up a lot of doors overseas, getting signed to overseas labels. So... Um, ideally what I would think and I think we've spoken about this a few times is to get ourselves onto the broad circuit of DJing and gigs and stuff like that um, obviously it's a slow process you've got to put in your time pay your dues whether we've done it for long or not as a group we've got to move that forward but um, I think we're pushing to go f up and up and up yeah internationally would be great to play on bigger stages and stuff to be able to share that positive energy and like bring South Africa through to the fore in, in our way yeah most definitely. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, just to add to that, um, we all have really, really good ideas. And um, long term, we, we have an idea for a larger show. And obviously that takes larger budgets and we need more people behind us and more time. Yeah. And, and I think um, with, any, with any great um, bands or electronic acts or you, or whatever the show is you need a team of people around you and um hopefully we'll start to get more backing from from uh, the bigger festivals in south africa and then hopefully that will springboard us internationally because that's where we want to be
Yeah, agreed. I think um, all of us feel that way for drum and bass at large. Yeah, um, connected to that, guys. I think you know what song made you fall in love with drum and bass. Uh, you were a real old one. I'd have to say uh, the Prodigy, No Good, uh, Start the Party. That's that. That for me is just um, even though it's not a hundred percent drum and bass, it's just uh, the a track that just got me in there. And and, and although I didn't play drum and bass right away and I've been through a lot of genres, that track really stands out not only as a as a as a drum and bass track, but a, like an ultimate classic and I think a lot of a, a lot of old heads would really resonate with that track. Uh for me I'd probably have to say high contrast, kiss kiss bang bang. Um, for me especially, I've always had such a thing for old school sounding vocals, and the way they process those vocals on the on that song is just unreal. It was, and I mean, I listened to drum and bass for years before I heard that song really, and like actually listened to it, and since then it was just like, so yeah, that's definitely my song. Um, I had a song already, which would be LTJ Bookham's Atlantis, which is back in like. I don't know, 98, 99 or something. Very basic, original drum and bass sound, but it was one of the most beautiful songs I'd ever heard and got me into it. But what I'd say that actually kick-started my understanding of that kind of rhythm and beat would, after Toby's just mentioned Prodigy, would be Prodigy Firestarter with uh, all those kind of drums and that kind of like fast-paced, but still dance music orientation, you know? I think that's, yeah. So LTJ Bookham, Atlantis, got me into drum and bass. That's when I bought my first CD. That was the song, and then from there the rest of history yeah yeah four days dude yeah um guys what's your favorite gig so far each of you um i i would have to say the last gig we played it was uh, felt fest it wasn't the biggest crowd but um it was just um yeah it was just the, the vibe there was really good and i think like as a group we really brought it and um I'd say my second favorite was our first gig together, which was um, Science Friction, which, you know, was very different to what we're doing now, but I still felt that same raw energy that, you know, I get every time I'm up there with these two. Um, yeah, I think I have to say this last gig, this Felt Fest gig that we just did in Popo was really, really fucking cool. It was really cool. But, um, I think for me personally, my favorite my favorite gig would have been the first addiction that we played their third birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, purely because for me, it, I, I really pushed myself out of my comfort zone, like 100%. Uh, that was like my debut to do shit that I've never done before. Rapping. Yeah, rapping, and I, and it was cool, and I pulled it off. And yeah. for me, that was just like adrenaline. Miss Jilla came up. Miss Jilla came about. Yeah. So that was probably my favorite. Um, definitely those two. I agree. The addiction birthday and the felt fest. I think for me, the other really good one uh, was Mozambique. Very small crowd. I just think the vibe up there, that was something I've never, never experienced before. Yeah. Like yeah. sitting on a rooftop, hot and sweaty, like yeah. Yeah. seeing the one side and, it, and people just sitting around, actually, not drum and bass people, playing music and then watching slowly more and more people get up. And then I think my favorite part was when we double dropped it, like these two tracks, super kind of like funky bass lines. The last tracks I, thought, I expected people to dance yeah. to. And these two, yeah. this old dude is busy like going off, like totally doing like an old school kind of swing dance thing to it and it was that was one of my favorite moments I think yeah, ever. Yeah. yeah yeah cool connected to that guys favorite double drop <laughs> and don't say Doug <laughs> <laughs> um jeez I'd say for me um, because I'm not really on the DJing side of matter and I'm more on on, on the effects and scratching um Matt does a, an amazing double drop of uh, Dub Fink's Bounce and I think, what is the other track that you drop? It's Dark Days. Dark Dark days. days. And um, for, for me, just to, to be able to build on top of that, and it's towards the end of our set. So at that, at that point in our set, Matt has got these two tracks going. I'm also doubling, so almost making a triple drop with the vocals and doing all of these matter effects on top of it. So I think that, that, that for me feels like the most energy we get in our sets. And it's it's really like the, the, the culmination of, of, of the last hour of music. And it just, it, it does this amazing break. And I think it just really shows what we are as, as, as a group. 
Uh, for me, funnily enough, it's actually the two songs. No, it's one of your songs and the song that get, that comes on after that in one of our sets. Um, so it would be Dark Days, um, Alex Perez Forward remix. And then it mixes into, it drops with um, Bright Lights by Die. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And Interface, yeah. That for me is probably the best. Um, I have that CD, that mix that we have. I have it in my car. And I've scratched it to shit just trying to fast forward to that specific point. <laughs> Uh, so that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's my favorite double job. I'd have to agree that both of those two are my favorites, and then strangely enough, mine's actually the follow-on from that. So <laughs> like, uh, it's it's Die and Interface, uh, Rockers remix of Bright Lights, and then after that is Calyx and TV tune, and I can't for the life of me remember the name of it, but it's like a super heavy neuro song, and when I play it by, my, by itself, I've never been able to get a crowd to respond to it, but with Rockers yeah, remix that, yeah. <laughs> And as soon as you chuck Rockers remix over, it's like keeps the momentum going. Yeah, yeah. And for me, that's like when it's. It is skank. It's skank. It is skank. Thanks, Dougie. Oh, so, yeah, go. skank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite combo. So, I mean, that's amazing that all three of those yeah, are in that's order. That's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it just, just really is the end of our sets. Yeah. It's just like we build, we build to that point. Favorite and part of I the think that's. <laughs> it's also amazing that Doug knows Matt's tracks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, shout out to myself. <laughs> uh, guys, who's your favorite musician, drum and bass or non-drum and bass? Um, more feels for me, um, and that's uh, Madak. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've played that CD on repeat, uh, even today. I, I think I jump as much as I can to that. Um, that album is just really, it's, um, it's high energy, it feel, feels good, the vocals, the production, it just, yeah, I really like that. Madoc. Uh For me, sure, that's actually a very, very difficult question. Um, at the moment, I would say Sophie Letitre. Um, yeah, she's an incredible vocalist. Um, actually, I never knew about her at all until Matt introduced me to her literally like a week ago, and I have been obsessed ever since. Um, in terms of bands, I'll go there because you know artist bands definitely Alt J, straight up, one hundred percent up there, number one for me. Drum and bass, logistics, and noisia. Alternative music would definitely Bonnie Burr. Justin Vernon is an incredible musician, and I think he's one of the like the greatest musicians of our time. To be honest, I just think it might be underrated. If he was in Beatles era, he'd be a Beatle. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's my opinion. And then um, I think in terms of bands, my all-time favorite group of all time is Deftones, hands down. So that's my four best. Very different. It's awesome. <laughs> Do you guys find being a trio at all challenging? Oh, absolutely. It's um, like having a, a wife or a son or a girlfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, I mean, number one, if you don't make time, the relationship breaks. Um, so for all of us, it's just, it's, it's finding time. And then we all have a voice, which I think is part of like what makes it so interesting. I mean, we all, um, I'm eight years older than Matt. Matt's eight years older than Jess. So we're all very different age groups. But um, just being able to find time for one another and actually listen to to what we all want to bring. So so yeah, it's challenging, but it's it's rewarding. Yeah. I definitely think um, I would say the time is the biggest issue for me. Anyways, um, I feel like we have a lot. Even though we have a lot of separate ideas, we do have a lot of. Um, the same ideas or not even the same ideas we have ideas that we can all work with together. you know so that works it's not like we have completely out there and no one's really getting it you know together um so that for me isn't the biggest problem it's definitely the time um especially you know we live quite far away as well so seeing each other as much as we would like to and ultimately rehearse and practice and and throw out new de uh, new ideas and make new music and stuff isn't that easy um when you are given like a couple hours once every now and then to kind of work with, you know, so that's my, my biggest challenge. Yeah, without this, without repeating what everyone else is saying, it's exactly that, it's um, distance and time. Uh, we've all worked different hours. Toby's got a family to, to look after as well. Jess has got a Monday to Friday job and then weekends off. I work, you know, Thursday to Monday and then two days off there. So it's like evenings and if that, then we've got to drive out like an hour to get to Toby if we want to try and get something done there. And then, yeah, it's a big mission, but I think... But ultimately, all very worth it. Well, yeah. 
I can. We also try to do um, private um, practice sessions. You know, like I'll be cutting up all mm. all through the week, um, putting ideas together. Matt, Chase get together a lot, do vocals. Mm. Um, work on tracks Mixing yeah it's just stuff, yeah. if i can add a bit of credit i think like to look at our sets and how they've progressed we have had one or two sessions where we have practiced together and we've spoken about ideas but i mean at the end of the day jess is going home and writing stuff toby's going home and making a whole bunch of scratch samples and then scratching like on the night we know our sets but we actually like none of us know what's new and added yeah. to the table so, I mean, we all kind of like, Jess will bring a whole new rap and none of us know what's going on. Toby adds in a whole lot of new effects and we don't know what's going on. So, there's, there's an element of freestyle there within the rehearsal, which is amazing because then we all surprise each other and that, that energy for me on stage is also one of the best yeah. things about Absolutely. that. Yeah. So, although the time is inhibiting, at the same time, I feel like we make it work for us. I mean, yeah, you guys do have your challenges, but you have a lot of people who do look up to you, which is awesome. Um, Last question, guys. Do you have any advice for any new blood in the industry? Absolutely. Um, geez, um, I've wanted to quit DJing so many times. I've been DJing now for 18 years. And yeah, it's just like, don't expect to, you know, make a mix and be playing as a headliner. You know, for me, even, even now, I still you know have gigs that just aren't great but it's just it's been consistent it's practice and you know that's the best thing that you can do for yourself just put in the time and the love yeah definitely the love uh, well i am still a new blood to this industry anyway um but i think for me if i could give advice to anyone it would be to push yourself out of your comfort zone 100 percent. that's all i've done since we went since matter started that's it like it's been uncomfortable i've gotten irritated i've cried i've shouted at matt numerous times you know i've you know um really <laughs> you have to have to push yourself get uncomfortable get you know weird and don't enjoy it for a little bit but i promise you once you push through that and you're on stage and you're doing stuff that you never thought you could ever do it's fucking worth it it's it's awesome and yeah just like toby said do it for the love yeah first thing i'd say is like know your motivation why are you doing music? Music is one of the very raw, fundamental, basic things as humans we can connect to. It passes, surpasses all language, culture, anything like that. And I mean, if, you, if you're doing it from a place of love, nothing else really matters. Um, um, yeah, the next thing I'd also say is, like, dude, remember, on your way up the ladder, you're going to be climbing over the people that will climb over you on your way down. So I think it's respect and love for everyone. And I think, again, that ties back into it. If you're keeping it for the love and the passion, nothing else really matters. There will always be politics. You cannot avoid politics come hell or high water. Um, but it's how you handle that and what part you play in those politics that matters. And again, I feel like I've connected with two other people now that don't care for anything other than being able to share their skill and passion for a, a music genre um, on a very real basis that they're not above anybody else it's like we're, we're all able to actually walk out afterwards appreciate the appreciation and give appreciation back for the people enjoying it with us because and ultimately th we are there because they are there and they are there because we are there so it's it's a it's a it's a relationship with these people so i think yeah be real to yourself first and foremost like life you know and then first and foremost <laughs> yeah and then yeah just keep keep like it's gonna be hard man like anything in life and if you want to do it, do it. Don't expect fame and fortune. Mm. It's not it's not what it's about. Yeah. Word. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thanks for taking this time out of your week and your busy time. Yeah, I, I love how I'm dug and you guys aren't glitch. Like, I'm not glitch. I'm glitch, hey? I thought was interviewing us. Hey, no, dude. It was definitely glitch the whole time, dude. Damn. Cool. Anyway, guys, with Binge Records, this is Glitch, and I'm signing out. And yeah, matter. You guys can say your goodbyes. Big ass Binge Records. Big ass. Yeah. Thanks, Glitch. Thanks, guys. Hashtag Glitch for Friction.